the mind becomes uh, impure when these five hindrances are present. Buddha called them uh, obstructions, hindrances, and weakening of wisdom. That is the important thing. Weakening of wisdom. We want to cul we want to sharpen our wisdom, make it uh, strong and clear. And uh, when the hindrances are present, that uh, strength and clarity, sharpness of the of wisdom, uh, becomes uh, weak. And therefore, uh, Buddha called the weakness of uh, wisdom. Then, five hindrances become ten hindrances. That is very unusual. You can see in uh, places like Abhidhamma, five hindrances become seven. But in uh, Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, Buddha mentioned in one place that five hindrances become ten hindrances. That is, each hindrance can be divided into two, like internal and external. Uh, how can there be uh, internal and external? Say, for instance, uh, the sense desire arises depending on one's own body, one's own feelings one's own strength, uh, one's own health, uh, appearance and feeling and so forth, uh, sense desire can arise. For instance, one's eyesight is good, uh, one would have a desire for the eyes. And that is why Mahasatipatthana, we will read it later on, Chakkum bhikkhya pirupan sadhrupan itya satanna upadjamana upadjati. Eyes are pleasing, pleasant, acceptable, and their desire arises. Similarly, of other senses, sensory uh, 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 consciousness, uh, 30 out of uh, 60 places where sense desire arises, 30 are internal, 30 are external. That means sense desire can arise by seeing objects, external objects happens to be pleasant, sound happens to be pleasant and so forth, sense desire can arise. So by focusing one's own body and feelings and so forth, uh, one six senses, uh, the feeling arising, consciousness arises, thought arises through these six senses, uh, sense desire can arise. Similarly, through the six senses, when we perceive external objects, hindrances can arise. And same way, Hatred can arise, just like in those my, monks' minds, hatred arose by contemplating on the parts of the body, of their own body. Uh, their ill health, uh, their physical appearance, their in inability to do things, you know, because of their own personality, hatred can, anger can arise in their mind. Some people say, I hate myself, I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, do what either other people do. I cannot do my studies well, I, you know, uh, my health is not good, I fail in everything, others are success, successful and so forth. One blames oneself, by blaming oneself, uh, hate can arise within oneself. And at the same time, hate can arise by uh, looking, seeing, uh, hearing, smelling, touching, and so forth of external objects. 
Now, restlessness and worry can arise from one's own body, uh, eyes, ears, nose and so forth. When body falls sick, one can become very restless. When eyes become uh, blurry, not clear, all of a sudden um, eyesight becomes weak. One begins to wonder what happened to the eyesight. Hearing is not clear, one begins to hate oneself. <laughs> so, I mean, doubt can arise. When things are not clear in one's own mind, with regard to one's own future, with regard to one's own next life, and so forth, doubt can arise. Similarly, doubt can arise when one sees somebody, hears some sound, smells something, and so forth, doubt can arise. Uh, seeing someone, uh, one may begin to think, uh, I don't know what sort of person is this. Doubt can arise. I don't know whether this person is trustworthy or not. Doubt can arise. I don't think this person is honest. Doubt can arise. So, thinking about other persons, um, hearing, smelling, touching and so forth, doubt can arise in our mind. Then, uh, uh, sleepiness and drowsiness with, uh, within one's own you know, internal physical conditions, sleepiness and drowsiness can arise. Also by hearing, uh, seeing, smelling, touching of external things, sleepiness and drowsiness can arise. As I mentioned earlier, when you listen to somebody, if it is very, very boring and tiring, you feel sleepy. If you listen to another person, it is so soothing, comforting, lulling, you fall asleep, sleepiness and drowsiness can arise. Uh, similarly, doubt, the last is doubt. So all the five hindrances can arise from within oneself and from outside. Therefore, five hindrances become ten hindrances according to this particular discourse. It is through the uh, s s sensitivities of six senses that the mind uh, inwardly, when mind uh, uh, focuses itself, within itself, hindrances can arise. And when the mind, uh, through this uh, uh, sensory sensitivities, when external things come through the senses, mind can create the hindrances. All hindrances arise in the mind through six senses. These six senses uh, arouse hindrances through the body, and these six senses arouse hindrances through external uh, uh, objects. Six senses are the information, the doors, as Buddha called them doors, chakku dwara, sota dwara, and so forth. Through these doors, things, uh, when the doors are open, external things come. When the doors are closed, internal things happen. So whether we close the doors or open the doors, so long as we have not uh, taken care of uh, what is most necessary to stop the hindrances arising, hindrances arise. So I'm going to mention how we uh, 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 nourish them. Now up to this point, we mention how they arise. Then once they arise, one, once they are arisen, we nourish them. Buddha said, just like this body uh, has to be nourished through food. Material food, you know, liquid, uh, solid, hard food of all kind, uh, we, we put into the body to nourish it, support it, maintain it. Similarly, these hindrances also 
are nourished by paying unmindful attention, paying unmindful attention to uh, signs. Buddha said, frequently giving careless attention. Uh, we arouse, we nourish, support, maintain each of these hindrances. Now you saw how hindrances arise. When we, key, when we pay unmindful reflection, we nourish them. For instance, when, he, when uh, uh, greed arises in our mind, it will not take root unless we maintain it by unmindful reflection. For instance, as soon as we saw an object, greed can arise. If we do not pay unmindful attention, it will fade away, disappears. But when we pay unmindful re um, attention or make unmindful reflection, then that greed can remain. That is the nourishment. How can we uh, uh, pay unmindful attention or make unmindful reflection? When the object, when I see object, Buddha said, uh, Anubhyanjana gahi hoti. Nimitta gahi hoti, Anubhyanjana gahi hoti. First we see the overall object, then we go into the details. Eyes are beautiful, nose is beautiful, hair style is beautiful, skin is beautiful, height is beautiful, you know, overall performance is beautiful. The way the person walks is handsome and beautiful, and so forth and so on. We keep adding more and more things into that overall picture. And that adding overall, adding uh, details into the overall picture has to be done unmindfully. Then we glue to the object. Uh, desire normally has this uh, gum in it. Uh, but if we don't push the gum very hard against the object, you can remove it easily. But if you push hard and press hard, then glue gum stick to the object and difficult to remove. So unmindful reflection is just like pressing the, the object to the glue and glue, glue, glue V or gummed uh, paper or gummed object press against another object. Then it glue together. With regard to all uh, hindrances, uh, unmindful reflection is the food for nourishing, supporting, maintaining hindrances, unmindful reflection. Then Buddha gave um, many, many methods of overcoming hindrances. Only very few you can see in uh, commentaries and uh, uh, many books, but the whole list of things, it's difficult to list because so many things is suggested for us to use to overcome hindrances. Number one, 
is mindful reflection. Mindful reflection. What is mindful reflection? Mindful reflection is uh, using mindfulness and using mindfulness we think. Whenever, whichever hindrance arise, we mindfully think of uh, uh, if it is sense desire, we have to think asada, adinava, okara, sankilesa, nisarana. Five stages. All mindful reflection. Asada means uh, the enjoyment. Whenever a sense uh, pleasure arises, it is enjoyable. Uh, whether it is um, inanimate objects or animate objects or person or places or animal or whatever, uh, has uh, uh, in itself something to please us. Piece of art or plant or tree or no matter what, whatever object we enjoy, it ha that object has the power to make us please. That is called enjoyment, asada, asada. And if all the objects in the universe are totally, completely void of pleasure, nobody wants to live because no object can make the person happy. But every object in the universe has the power of making us happy, making us glad, pleasing us. That's why six billion people have uh, six different billion ways of uh, enjoying things because objects can make us pleased. So whenever we talk about uh, uh, suffering and so forth, people completely ignore this part. We should not ignore. When we, whenever we talk about suffering, we should not ignore the pleasure that we derive from various objects in the world. And Buddha said very clearly in Sanyutta Nikaya, if the whole uh, sensory objects are displeasing, unattractive, making us painful and happy, nobody wants to live because nothing gives them uh, even little pleasure. Since all of them give a pleasure, we all want to enjoy them, use them. That is called asada. Then, that is the stage number one. Then, he said, that is mindful reflection. Mindful, re mindfully we reflect that no doubt by nature all objects have the power of pleasing us. Mindfully we reflect. And we don't think that every object is negative and everything is negative. No, no. We've, because Buddha was a human being. That is, the, that is the advantage that we have. You know, he talked to human beings as a human being. Therefore, human beings can relate to another human being. He did not come from above and say something that no human being can ever comprehend. <laughs> and that is why we have, a, we have a hope. He talked to us from his own experience as a human being. All ob objects have pleasure. Then he said, be mindful of it. Then the next stage is Adinava. Adinava. Adinava means danger. Danger of this enjoyment. Enjoyment itself is not danger. 
at that moment the mind is pleasing, we are relaxing, uh, we feel uh, uh, not painful, we feel comfortable, we feel happy and so forth. That it in itself is not wrong, not bad, not unethical, not criminal, not immoral. That itself has to be acknowledged, accepted, that there is a pleasure. But the danger also must be acknowledged. What is the danger? Danger is that gluing nature. The senses glue to the joy, to enjoyment. Uh, through unmindful reflection, thinking that this pleasure is permanent. This is what, uh, what is called distorted perception, distorted view, uh, distorted consciousness, distorted thoughts. To uh, misinterpret the pleasure. How we misinterpret it? We misinterpret the pleasure to be permanent, to be permanent. That is the danger. And that which is, that when we see that it is permanent, we never think of uh, uh, that it would change and therefore we cling to it and all of a sudden the truth, the reality pull the rug under our feet that it changes. When it changes which we never expected. So something unexpected happened. People say unexpected happen. When somebody dies, they say unexpected happen. They never expect some that we die. So, uh, danger is uh, uh, of uh, pleasure is not seeing that it is impermanent. That is the danger. Not the impermanent itself. Impermanent itself is not danger, but not seeing impermanence is the danger. Not seeing impermanence is because of this distorted, distorted view, distorted perception. And that is why sensual pleasure, Buddha said, is uh, like coloured water. When the water is coloured, as I said, you cannot see the reality. But when we see the reality, when we uh, have the water without colour, we can see the depth of it. Similarly, when the sensual pleasure arises, if we can enjoy it mindfully, we can enjoy sensual pleasure and also we can enjoy the change of sensual pleasure. <laughs> because we see, change also is a pleasure. You know, when you are eating the same food again and again, you say, I need a change. Because you know that it can be changed. If we see that there is no way to change this food, you keep suffering, eating the same food, and you don't know what to do about it. But if you see that this can be changed, it is possible to change, it is changing, then you make the change, then you enjoy it. So when we see impermanent, the pleasure is impermanent, and then you see when it changes, something else ar ar arises. So you accept that instead of rejecting it. You reject the change of pleasure because you never expect it, it happens against your wish. But seeing impermanence makes you comfortable to accept when the change takes place. 
So the danger, we have to see the danger of pleasure. Adhinava. Asada Adhinava. Then the third stage is Okara. Okara means degradation. We go down the drain. We become obsessive. Obsessive, compulsive, what do you call compulsive, obsessive behavior. We become obsessed with sensual pleasure. When we are obsessed with sensual pleasure, we go down the drain. We ruin our health, we ruin our wealth, ruin, ruin all spiritual attainment and so forth. We never think of those things and one day we realize that we are all a chaos. Mind is a chaos. No peaceful peace in our mind. That is what is called degradation, going down the drain. Asada Adina Okara. Then the third uh, Asada Adina Okara. Fourth is uh, Sankilesa. Sankilesa is defiling, it defiles the mind. Just like these five uh, metals defile gold when five hindrances affect the mind, mind becomes uh, what do you call polluted, corrupt, impure. And that is what is called uh, or uh, sankhilesa, defiling. Then, seeing these five, four stages, asada, adhinava, okara, sankhilesa, the pleasure, danger, uh, degradation, and defiling, <laughs> then, we see all these four stages with mindfulness. And then there arises a stage where mind uh, becomes disinterested, become uninterested this, this thing. Because after all, it begins with pleasure, but end, your, uh, end with defilements. And therefore, mind withdraws from it. That is called uh, nissarana or uh, or nekhamme chaanisanse. Nekhamme chaanisanse. The anisanse means uh, benefit, benefit of renunciation. Nekhamme chaanisanse. Anisanse. Anisansa is benefit, yes. Could you say it loudly? Degradation? Yeah. Okay. I said uh, degradation is uh, uh, bringing your uh, uh, mental states. Uh, away from your spiritual practice. You become obsessive. Uh, and uh, uh, so much indulgence. Uh, indulgence in sensual pleasure all the time makes you very, uh, in life, very chaotic. That is how people uh, uh, get involved in uh, what you call abusing senses, abusing senses. Uh, and that is what, what is called uh, mitchachara. In the third precept of the five precepts, or mm, five precepts, third precept is called kamesu mitchachara. Mitchachara is uh, misbehavior or abusing. Kamesu means sense pleasures. Not only sex pleasures, but sense pleasures. Because the word kamesu is used in plural. 
if it is singular, it would be kame or kamamha. Uh, since it is plural, it is used kame su. That means uh, indulgence in sensual pleasures. That is abusing our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And we you know, get so involved in these things that we drain our all our energy, spend all our time, all our money in uh, abusing these senses. The other day I gave an example of somebody watching, somebody listening to radio. He said, uh, I heard it on you know, one day on a radio uh, talk show. Somebody said he never wanted to sleep. Why? He did not want to miss any news. Because radio broadcasts news all the time, 24 hours. He was listening to 24 hour uh, radio. He did not want to miss any news coming from any corner of the world. So you can see how much this, how, how much uh, uh, obsessed this person is with listening to news. How much news can he listen? There are millions of radio stations all over the world. They broadcast uh, millions of news from thousands of languages. How many languages this man knows <laughs> to listen to all the news? Things are happening every second all over the world. So, but his, but his idea, his enjoyment of listening to news is so much that he did not want to sleep. This one example, when you go to eat, how much you can eat? People can eat, I mean, so many times a day, so many things every day. At what cost? At the cost of their life, their health, their mental state, and so forth. So, indulgence in sensual pleasures is degradating. Bringing down your health, bringing down your peace, bringing down your comfort, bringing down everything in your life. And your spiritual growth will be declining every day. That is called degradation. Okar. Uh, Sankilesa, as I said, defiling. Every time in any of these sense, uh, any of these six, five hindrances arises in the mind, at that moment, mind becomes polluted, corrupted, impure. So, Mindful reflection is seeing these things in this way. It's called mindful reflection. That means without uh, uh, being uh, affected by hindrances. When hindrance arise, we should be able to watch the hindrance with mindfulness. That is one way uh, of overcoming the first hindrance, that is hindrance of sensual pleasures. Second hindrance is ill will. Mindful reflection of friendliness mindful reflection of friendliness would overcome ill will. You know, practicing mindful, um, practicing loving friendliness is one thing. Practicing loving friendliness is one thing. But mindful reflection of my, my friendliness is another. We first have to reflect mindfully on friendliness. 
by uh, seeing how friendliness promotes our own peace of mind. Mindfully we must see how, uh, see the benefit, uh, asad. All these five things we must apply to each of the hindrance. Uh, I mean, uh, when we use mindfulness, we must use mindfulness to use all these five uh, steps. For, for sensual pleasure, I said, kama nang asada, adinava, okara, sankilesa, then nekame chansase. Similarly, when ill will arises, we first must see the benefit of friendliness mindfully. Then we must mindfully reflect on the danger of anger. Danger of anger and degradation of when, when anger is maintained, sustained, supported by unmindful reflection, how we uh, we, um, uh, how dangerous it is in, the, in, in first place. Secondly, we must see how it makes, uh, brings us down, obsessed. So, person can even eventually becomes, become a, a murderer, criminal, because of uncontrolled, untamed, undisciplined hatred, anger. So that is how the person degrades, goes down the drain. And the third is uh, uh, asada, adinava, sankilesa. Asada, adinava, okara, sankilesa. Sankilesa means defiling. How anger defiles the mind. The moment it arises, we can see how much it has defiled the mind. Then the, then the benefit or the profit of letting go of anger, that is where we cultivate loving friendliness. So mindfully we must see these five stages of anger. First, we see the benefit of not having anger, pure, clear state of mind, and then the uh, danger, degradation, defiling state of anger, and lastly, the benefit of cultivating friendliness. That is where we start cultivating friendliness. Then. The third is uh, sleepiness and drowsiness, third hindrance. There are three stages of overcoming sleepiness and drowsiness. First stage is mindfulness, mindful reflection of uh, uh, not having sleepiness and drowsiness and then go through the same thing. Uh, danger, degradation, defiling, and the benefit of not having uh, sleepiness and drowsiness. Having seen that, then we have to arouse uh, stages to overcome sleepiness and drowsiness. This, uh, the, it has three stages. Stage number one is called Arambadhatu. Arambadhatu. That means effort to the element of effort. That means element. Element of effort to be aroused in our mind. That means we must make every ounce of our effort available to overcome sleepiness. Once we arouse it, then we must maintain it. That is called 
element of uh, uh, making effort, that is continuation. <coughs> that is called uh, Nikkama Dhatu. Nikkama means moving. Aramba is beginning. Once we began, we move on. That's called Nikkama. The word Nikkama comes from the same root, leaving. That comes from the root Kamu. Kamu means the root, Kamu means movement. Kamu Gamane. That means the word, even English word Kam, comes from the similar root, movement. So the second effort, second element is element of movement. Not just arousing element, but we have to put the element into action and keep doing it. The third is also an element that's called parakkamadhatu. Parakkam means vela. You are, you are hero. You should be able to pat on your own shoulder, saying, gee, I have, hurrah, I have done something. You should be able to tell yourself, congratulate yourself. I have not failed my effort. I proceed with my effort. I don't, I will never stop. So, these three are called three elements of effort. Arambadhatu, beginning element. Nikkamadhatu, proceeding element. And Parakkamadhatu, accomplishing element. Accomplishment is an element. Based on this element, we accomplish something. Only when we accomplish it, we congratulate ourselves, pat on our own shoulders, and thank ourselves. So, this is what we had to do to overcome sleepiness and drowsiness. There are many other things I will focus on them later on in my afternoon talk. But I want to go through these five stages of each element, each hindrance, what you call each uh, yeah, hindrance. The, the fourth hindrance is called restlessness and worry. When restlessness and worry, also we go through the same five stages, asada, adinama, okara, sankilesa, and nekkama, nisarami. The benefit of a peaceful state and danger of restlessness and worry. Because when people are restless and worried they, all the time, they, they, they get in, into deep, uh, deep depression. And sometimes they, you know, this, some, some of these uh, bipolar people have a lot of restlessness and worry. That might begin with some very tiny little bit, but it can magnify. If we catch it at the very beginning, that they can see the danger, and then slowly they can get rid of it. Anyway, see the benefit of a peaceful state and danger of restlessness and worry, degradation, making our draining our energy, making ourselves uh, very uncomfortable, and then uh, uh, defiling the mind. And then the benefit and uh, the, the, the benefit of uh, having peaceful state of mind. So peaceful state of mind, peaceful object is the uh, object that we have to reflect ourselves on to overcome drow uh, restlessness and worry. Peaceful objects are like uh, uh, peaceful person like Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, uh, tranquility, uh, 
gaining uh, uh, may even be listening to very soothing, lulling, comforting music, chanting, things like that are the soothing objects for restlessness and worry. Then the last hindrance is the uh, doubt. Uh, doubt also uh, we have to see the uh, benefit of uh, uh, clarity, confidence, faith and then go through the same stages of uh, danger, degradation and defilements, defiling the mind. Uh, the doubt arises from uh, some, some uh, situations which are either wholesome or unwholesome. Buddha says, Buddha gives this whole list, wholesome and unwholesome states. So you don't know which is which. Blameless and blameless state. You are, que you are questioning. What is, what is uh, blameworthy, what is not. Inferior and superior states. Then dark and bright states. When these states are there, Buddha, have, Buddha has not specified what, as he has not specified what these states are. Because they are very wide. When you say wholesome and unwholesome, it can be anything. Uh, superior and inferior, anything. A, a, a person, situation, attainment and uh, so forth. And uh, dark and bright states, uh, also is mental state, uh, dark and bright uh, uh, understanding, uh, uh, explanation, um, reading material, uh, and so forth. So many things can come into that category. So, mindful reflection of these factors and frequent mindful reflection not only once or twice, but very often. That means mindful reflection should be the theme all the time. Then Buddha gave very beautiful simile that we all must remember before. I want to mention that before we conclude this talk. Suppose there is a frying pan heated the entire day you put on the stove and it is heated all day long, very hot. Then you let a drop of water fall into it, not very quickly, one drop, after a while another drop, after a while another drop, then what happens to each drop? Slowly evaporates. Why? The pan is hot. Similarly, when the mindfulness is always there, when these hindrances arise occasionally, they disappear. <laughs> because the mindfulness is so strong. It is so strong. There is no room for these hindrances to stay in the mind. Just mind, mind, mindfulness is just like this a hot pan. Hindrances falling into it are like these occasional drops of water. I think with this simile, I want to conclude this talk this morning, and uh, I have. Uh, many, many, many points to mention to 
uh, overcome all the five hindrances. I have not covered entire uh, hindrances. So I can do it this afternoon. I think this is enough.